In our previous modules, we've dealt almost exclusively with experimental designs and models that allow us to analyze data when we have different individuals in our different groups. That is, we didn't have a situation where the same experimental unit was measured repeatedly under different conditions. But now we turn to these experimental designs where we do have these repeated measurements. Now, first a definition. Repeated measures designs involve multiple observations of the same experimental unit under different conditions. Units here could be different people, it could be machines, whatever it is when it's the same unit measured multiple times, we have a repeated measures design. Now some special terminology here. A factor with multiple levels measured for each experimental unit is called a repeated factor or a within subject factor. Notice the terminology, within subject meaning within a single individual, we have repeated observations on that factor. Now, the types of factors we've had up to this point, we would call between subject factors. That is, factors whose measurements are manipulated or observed between or across different subjects. Let's start this module with an example that we can work through graphically, and then we'll see how to analyze these data in Jump. I'll just mention that repeated measures designs and their associated analyses get fairly complex. So in the spirit of this course being a largely practical delve into the different topics, I won't get into the math too deeply, but I do want you to see a little bit of the complexity that these designs present us with, so you can appreciate the fact that our models will be formed a little bit differently. All right, so let's start with our example. Imagine we have a number of different judges, and we're gonna ask them to make ratings of four different wines. What we'll end up with is a grid of responses where each judge will give us four different observations. Now recall our general linear model assumptions. We say that our error is normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma square, and the observations are IID, that is they are independent and identically distributed. Now independence here is a pretty important statement. It is saying that one error or one observation is not dependent on another. That is, it doesn't tell us any information about another observation in our data set. But if we have a judge make multiple ratings, let's say judge one here, those observations can't be independent. They're coming from the same person. For instance, suppose judge one is a very critical rater. So all of judge one's ratings will all tend to be very low. So those observations are not independent. That is, knowing one of them lets us predict where the other ones will be. So we will have violated one of our assumptions of typical general linear model designs. That is, we don't have complete independence among our different observations, which means the errors in our model will also not be independent. Now, repeated measures designs and their data have been a problem for statistics for quite a long time. And because of this, there are some different analytic approaches that have been developed to handling repeated measures data. Now, I'm only going to mention these in passing. I just want you to realize there are different approaches that have been developed and understand that because repeated measures is such a problem, there has been some controversy over the best way to approach these data. Now, perhaps the oldest method was a general linear model ANOVA, that is, an expected mean square solution. So, by restructuring and making certain assumptions about what are called covariances in the data, we can actually perform an ANOVA in sort of the similar way that we've done it before. These led to what are called closed form solutions, so actual calculations one could perform by hand in order to fit a linear model. Now another approach came a little bit later, which is known as a multivariate analysis of variance approach. This approach in essence forms linear contrasts and tests them using a MANOVA. Now the final method, and the one that we're going to have a preference for, is using linear mixed models, which uses a type of estimation known as REML, which is residualized or restricted maximum likelihood. Now, linear mixed models have been around for 30 or 40 years, but they're fairly computationally intense. And by that I mean they actually require your computer to do a lot of work. So their utility hasn't really been great until recently when we have personal computers that are incredibly fast. So linear mixed models could take days or weeks to fit maybe 10 years ago for a moderately sized data set, and now we can do them and jump in a matter of seconds. So we're going to be taking a linear mixed models approach. It has a number of other advantages that we won't talk about here, but for our purposes, it will look very similar to the types of models we've developed before, and in Jump, it'll be very straightforward. So now, let's look at our one repeated factor linear model, and we'll start like usual with our population model. 
Like always, we're seeking to estimate or explain the YIJs, so the score on Y for the ith individual in the jth treatment. As usual, we'll start with a grand mean, so the mean over all observations. We want to pull that out of our data before we start estimating the structure. Now here's where things will change a little bit. Since we have subjects repeatedly measured, to understand or to facilitate the modeling, we're actually going to bring subjects into the model. That is, we're going to explicitly model a subject offset. Now in our population model, this will be listed as the row i's. So that's the overall offset for individual i. Remember, offsets in general are just the degree to which one condition is different from the grand mean. In this case, the offsets associated with row will be the degree to which an individual's measurements, remember we have multiple of them, all differ from the grand mean. So in essence, we're modeling the degree to which an individual is above or below average on average. Next, we'll have a term associated with our treatment effects. That is the treatment offset for level J. Now this will probably be the main interest of our model. We're modeling some factor. We want to see what differences there are among the factor levels. In our case, it'll be wine to start with. And notice that our treatment offsets will be formed like usual, the degree to which one level of wine is different from the grand mean on average. And finally, like usual, we'll have a term for error, so the epsilon ij's. Now to foreshadow a little bit, we're going to have to think about this error term a little more in detail, and I want to hint at what it will be. It turns out that it's going to be an interaction term. Now you notice that our one factor linear model here seems to have two factors, and we've always modeled two factor models with that interaction. Now it turns out that the interaction between rho and ta is actually the error term. That is, the degree to which individuals differ in their responses to the different wine. Remember what interactions are in general. To what degree does one factor's effect depend on the levels of the other factor? So in this case, think about what the interaction would read off as. To what degree does the effect of our treatment depend on the person? Now that's actually an important error term. The degree to which people differ in their response to some treatment is an indication of the stability of an effect. So to the degree that the interaction between the rows and taws is small, that's evidence for stability. If you think about it, if everybody had the exact same response to some treatment, then the interaction between rows and taws, the interaction between subjects and treatments, would be zero. So this interaction term is actually the error in this model. It will be our benchmark for how stable the effect is of whatever treatments we're applying. Now we'll come back to that error in just a second when we look at this in a diagram. But let's look first at our one repeated factor linear model in a sample. Now just like we've done before, we won't use Greek letters. Instead, we'll substitute the Roman characters. So this reads off as the yij's are equal to the y bar dot dot, the grand mean in our sample, plus the r sub i's, the overall offset for individual i, plus the t sub j's, the treatment offsets for level j of our factor, plus e sub ij.